Hey, Brett. Yes? Want to piss off some tuba players? Now, of course, my goal isn't to piss anybody off, but, well, there's uh, some terminology in music that we're going to go over today, and it has to do with how do we name notes. And, of course, we all know it. Notes are named A, B, C, D, E, F, G, sharp, flat, whatever. But how do you specify a specific note in a specific octave? One of the earliest ways to specify a specific note is organ terminology. Basically, this revolves around the pipe organ. A pipe has a specific length that has to be in order to sound a specific note. For instance, a roughly eight foot long pipe will produce a note C right below the bass clef. Four feet will produce C in the bass clef. Two feet will produce a C that's middle C. However, there are some problems with this. The first problem has to do with our tuning system. If we use A equals 440, these numbers are not exactly correct. Remember, A has fluctuated over the years from as low as A equals 392 to as high as A equals 466. This is a minor third in pitch variance. Second, and probably more importantly why we don't use this terminology much anymore, is nobody uses feet anymore except us stupid Americans. So, organ terminology is out. It's a good starting point, and we still use it a lot today. Organs still have feet written on all of their stops. But it's not a universal, and it doesn't translate well to every instrument. Speaking of instruments, we could name notes based on uh, where they appear on instruments. A lot of times you'll hear notes referred to as viola C or cello C, meaning it's the open C string of the viola or the open C string of the cello. However, again, these aren't universal. There are some better ways though, and one of them was developed by a German physicist named Hermann von Helmholtz, a great name for a villain if ever there was one. Helmholtz was one of the founding fathers of modern acoustics, and one of the simple things he did was set out a standard way of referring to specific pitches. This is called Helmholtz notation. On the screen you'll see all the different C's that Helmholtz would label. The lowest C we have is Contra C, notated by a capital C with a tick mark underneath. The just capital C is great C, this is the C below bass clef, and so on and so forth. There are a few variations on this. Below you'll see the variation that is most commonly seen. Instead of using the tick marks, we double the letter. So double C, double capital C, is the same as C with one tick mark. This system works very well until you get into the extreme octaves where you have to start counting the tick marks or the letters. By and large, nobody really uses Helmholtz notation anymore. It's too confusing. It takes too long to process what should be a very quick and easy notation process. We've switched mostly over to what we call scientific notation. Scientific notation is actually really easy to explain. Go to the bottom C on a piano. Now call that C1, and you're done. The next C up is C2, the next C up, C3, C4, C5, all the way up to the top C on the piano is C8. Simple. All notation systems have the same thing in common. They switch their octave between B natural and C natural. So if we go down to the bottom octave of the piano, C1, D1, E1, F1, G1, A1, B1, C2. And that's our first and primary octave. So you notice that I've got a trombone here in my hand. 
Well, it's the only low brass instrument I've gotten. Low brass players are really the only people that still use Helmholtz notation with any amount of frequency. This trombone, if we were to use pipe organ terminology, would be a nine foot B flat. If I stretch it out, it's about nine feet long, without the slide extended, of course. That means its fundamental tone is a B flat. Now, if we were to use scientific terminology, it would be B flat one. If we were to use Helmholtz notation, that would be double B flat. Now, here is where we're going to tick off some tuba players because double B flat. Oh, no, no, no. The extra, no, the extra letter means it's bigger. This can't be double B flat, but it is. Remember, we have to change at B to C. So tuba players love talking about their double B flat tuba or their double C tuba. Now the double C tuba is named correctly. The open fundamental of the C tuba is double C in Helmholtz notation. But the B flat tuba, one whole step lower, is in triple B flat because of that notation change we have to do at the octave. So contrabass tuba in B flat is in triple B flat. And every tuba player who has ever commented on a YouTube video is gonna go down to the comment section right now and say, you're wrong, it's in double B flat. Well, okay, fine, it's in double B flat. We'll name it after the second partial. That means the C tuba is in C. Just single C, it can't be. You see where it starts to break down? You can't have the same notation using Helmholtz for the C tuba and the B flat tuba because they cross that break where we change over notation. So the extra letter doesn't mean it's bigger, it just means it's in a different fundamental octave. Tuba players, I'm sure you're all going to comment below, but, 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 my double B flat tuba, your double B flat tuba is a euphonium, same length as this B flat trombone. This is why we don't use Helmholtz anymore. It's confusing. This would be B flat one. A euphonium's B flat one. A double B flat tuba, I count myself there too, is B flat zero. So, yeah, there's a lot of technicalities here, and but but uh, and this is probably why I stayed single for as long as I did.